Hello and welcome to Beyond the Chart. This is the series where we break down what's happening in the world of finance and the economy through charts in a way that's very easy to understand. For all the charts and sources mentioned in this video, don't forget to check out our newsletter. The link is in the description below. In this edition, we track the pulse of the Indian economy through fresh high frequency indicators and some other data points from inflation and factory output to jobs, corporate earnings and more. Let's start with something that has been a hot topic for the last few years, inflation. Retail inflation cooled to 2.1% in June 2025, the lowest in six years. The big driver was food prices, which slipped 0.2% year on year. Vegetables, last year's main inflation villain, thanks to supply shocks and erratic weather, fell nearly 19% as things improved. Part of this drop is a base effect. Prices had spiked in mid-2024, so the year-on-year -year comparison now makes inflation look lower. Core inflation, which strips out volatile food and fuel, tells a different story though. It rose to 4.4% in June, showing that underlying price pressures remain. RBI, in its monetary policy statement released on Wednesday, said that inflation could climb back to around 4% by the end of this financial year as the base effect fades and demand picks up again. Interestingly, while actual inflation is low, people still expect prices to rise sharply. The RBI's July survey shows household foresee about 9% inflation over the next year, down slightly from May but still far above reality. So even if prices are stable in reality, people's worries about inflation haven't gone away. Moving on, let's look at auto sales. See, car sales slipped 1.4% on a year-on-year -year basis in July after growing at 5.2% in June. The big worry is in two-wheelers, closely linked to the rural demand which fell 6.6% after two months of growth. Three-wheeler and commercial vehicle sales were up only slightly by 0.8% and 0.6%. The one bright spot was tractors and farm equipment with sales jumping 10.7% on a year-on-year -year basis, hinting at healthy farm incomes ahead of the harvest season. The 2025 monsoon has been a boon so far. By end of July, rainfall was 7% above normal, helping farmers plant 83 million hectares of kharif crops, over 5% more than last year. Rice sowing surged 16.69% on a year-on-year -year basis, while core cereals like Johar, Bajra, Ragi and Maize rose 4.74%. These gains could help keep food inflation in check later in the year. Not all crops are doing well though. Oil seeds are down by 3.99% and cotton is lower by 2.36%, partly due to uneven rains in central and western part of India and weaker crop prices that discouraged planting. After spiking earlier this year, demand for work under Manrega scheme has cooled. In July, 2.6 million fewer people sought jobs under the program, a drop of 11.4% from last year, suggesting better job availability elsewhere. While the declining demand for Manrega jobs suggests improving job availability in rural areas, wages tell a mixed story. Nominal rural wages have risen, but the pace has slowed. Men's wages have been flat at 5-6% to annual growth since mid of 2023, while women's wage growth has dropped from over 8% in 2023 to about 5.5% by March 2025. See, India's core industries, which include things like coal, crude oil, steel, cement, etc., grew only a little in June 2025. The overall output was up by 1.7% compared to the same time last year. That's slightly better than May's 0.7% growth, but still far behind the strong 5-6% growth we saw in early 2024. Now what's holding things back? Mainly the energy sectors. Coal production and energy generation actually fell in June. That's partly because they were being compared to a very high base. Last June had very strong numbers. But not all sectors are weak though. Steel and cement saw strong growth up by over 9%. This shows that construction and infrastructure activity are going strong. The broader measure of factory output called the Index of Industrial Production or IIP also shows a slowdown. In June of 2025, industrial output grew by just 1.5% compared to the last year. If we look at the entire April to June quarter, growth averaged around 2%. Half of the 4% growth we saw in the January to March quarter. Now to break it down, manufacturing grew 3.9% in June, but mining fell 8.7% and electricity slipped 2.6%. Infrastructure-linked goods rose over 7%, but consumer goods were mixed. 
नॉन ड्यूरेबल्स लाइक फूड एंड पर्सनल केयर फेल जीरो पॉइंट फोर परसेंट वाइल ड्यूरेबल्स लाइक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड अप्लायसेज ग्रू टू पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट सो वाइल सम पार्ट ऑफ द इकोनॉमी लाइक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड सर्टन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेगमेंट्स आर डूइंग फाइन अदर्स लाइक माइनिंग इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड फास्ट मूविंग कंज्यूमर गुड्स आर स्टिल स्ट्रगलिंग वाइल ऑफिशियल डेटा लाइक फैक्ट्री आउटपुट हैज बीन स्लो बिजनेस सर्वेज आर टेलिंग अ मच मोर पॉजिटिव स्टोरी इन जुलाई द एच एस बी सी इंडिया मैन्युफैक्चरिंग पी एम आई अ मंथली सर्वे द ट्रैक्स हाउ बिजी फैक्ट्रीज आर रोज टू फिफ्टी नाइन पॉइंट वन अप फ्रॉम फिफ्टी एट पॉइंट फोर इन जून दैट्स द हाइएस्ट इन ओवर अ इयर अ स्कोर अबव फिफ्टी मीन्स एक्टिविटी इज एक्सपांडिंग एंड द फर्दर इट इज अबव फिफ्टी द स्ट्रॉगर द ग्रोथ ऑन द सर्विस साइड think tech finance transport and tourism the story is similar the services pmi stayed strong at 60.5 in july almost unchanged from 60.4 in june but both the sectors saw hiring slow and business confidence hit a 3 year low as firms worried about rising competition and cost goods moving by train have been growing slowly In April 2025 which is the latest data available the amount of freight carried by Indian railways was up just 3.6% compared to a year ago now this slow growth tells us that key sectors like coal cement and food grains which make up most of what the railway transport haven't seen much of a pickup india sports are showing better signs though in june 2025 the amount of goods handled at major ports grew by 5.6% from a year earlier and suggests that both exports and imports are holding steady in october and november last year the port activity has seen a dip due to weak global trade since then there has been a steady growth in activity now looking at how much electricity and diesel we are using which can also give us insights into the economic activity factories construction sites trucks and trains closely depend on power and fuel not just homes and cars electricity use has been weak after falling minus 4.7% in may and minus 2.1% in june it rose just 2.2% in july this dip is partly due to cooler weather and a high base from last summer but it also reflects muted activity in factories and infrastructure now diesel consumption on the other hand has been steadier it grew by around 2 to 2.4% on a year on year basis between may and july that suggests freight and transport are holding up even if the broader economy isn't running at a full speed Now another way to track goods movement in India is through GST e-way bills which are required whenever goods are transported. In June of 2025 e-way bill generation was about 20% higher than a year earlier. This means more goods are moving across the country pointing to busy activity in trade and logistics. Now GST collections on the other hand have seen some slowdown in the last couple of months since GST applies to nearly everything we consume goods and services alike it serves as a reliable indicator of overall economic activity though on a absolute basis the numbers are still strong in July 2025 overall GST collection stood at 1.95 lakh crores but it is up just over 7.5% over the same period last year Hiring activity in formal white collar jobs is getting better. According to the latest Nokri Jobs Week index, overall hiring in July 2025 was up by 8% compared to the same time last year. This rise shows that more companies are now looking to expand their teams especially in areas where business is growing. The strongest demand came from fast growing industries. Hiring for roles in AI and ML saw the biggest jump rising by 41%. Hospitality and insurance followed with hiring growing by 26% and 22% respectively. Real estate hiring rose by 15%. BPO and customer service roles also saw 14% growth. Even IT hiring which had been slow over the past year grew by 7%. India's job market has been showing some signs of improvement. According to CMIE, the unemployment rate has been on a decline. declining trend since early 2025 dropping to around 6.5% by july from over 8.5% in mid 2024 businesses are feeling more confident about the coming months according to the rbi's latest industrial outlook survey the business expectations index which shows how optimistic manufacturers are rose to 126.2 for the july to september quarter up from 117.5 in the previous quarter Since anything above 100 signals growth the shows strong confidence going into the second half of 2025 now let's take a look at sectoral credit which gives insights into where money is flowing 
bank lending is growing at a steady pace but the kind of borrowers driving that growth has changed as of june 2025 the overall bank credit was up by about 10.4% compared to the same time last year that figure is healthy although it is slower than the growth observed in the last couple of years the biggest push is coming from small and medium businesses or msmes loans to msmes grew by around 13% and those to micro and small by 19% over the past year as banks continue to focus on this segment government support and loan guarantees have helped and small businesses are actively borrowing to grow on the other hand though big companies are borrowing much less loans to large industries grew less than a percent Overall industry credit grew around 5.5% mainly because small businesses were still borrowing. Credit to the services sector has slowed to 9.6% growth. Some subsectors like computer software and shipping are doing well, but others such as NBFCs and housing finance have cooled. Personal loans are also growing well up 11.8% from a year ago. People are still taking out loans to buy homes and vehicles and, and gold loans have gone up sharply over 124% boosted by high gold prices and the ease of borrowing against jewelry. India Inc's April to June 2020 fire results so far show that the economy is still growing but at a slower pace than last year. Let's start with the big picture. Company revenues were up 7.6% from a year ago and profits grew at 7.5%. Growth is still there but it's slower than last year and there is also a gap between which sectors are doing well and which aren't. Domestically focused industries are doing better than those hit by weak global demand or high costs. In the financial sector, banks and other lenders reported revenue growth of 11.3% and profit growth of 3.2% supported by steady loan growth and fewer bad loans. Energy companies saw sales edge up 0.7% as lower crude prices reduced sales values but profits rose 36% on improved refining margins in industrials revenue grew 9.2% and profits 16.2% helped by construction activity and higher spending on infrastructure in consumer goods fmcg companies increased sales by 9.6% while profits were up 3.7% Consumer discretionary companies including car makers and leisure brands grew sales by 8.1% but profits fell 1.8%. IT services companies posted revenue growth of 5.2% and profit growth of 6.7% reflecting the slower pace of global technology spending. Telecom companies reported revenues up 20.2% and profits up 32.6%. Finally, healthcare revenues grew 9.9% but profits plunged to 30.3% due to higher cost and softer export demand. Now, to sum it all up, the economy is still growing but momentum has cooled. Agriculture and infrastructure are keeping things moving. Inflation is at 6 year low and jobs are improving. But customer demand is patchy. Industrial growth is uneven and businesses are cautious.